Chris Allingham with the Virtual Weber Bullet. You know, today I want to uh, show you some stuff related to ChatGPT. You've probably heard of ChatGPT in the news. It's this artificial intelligence tool that is apparently going to ruin the world. At least a lot of people think so. It's a tool that, among other things, lets you ask questions and it comes back with detailed information that answers your question as if it was written by a human being in a very conversational form. And there's a lot of stuff in the news about how students are going to use this to cheat on writing their papers and that it's going to put a lot of people out of work who do writing because you'll be able to put a few parameters into an artificial intelligence tool like this. It'll come back with an article, a newspaper article, a magazine article, a website article, and the people who write those kinds of articles would be put out of work. But I thought I wanted to give it a try and just see what it's about. I like to learn about new technology. And I wondered what ChatGPT knows about, for example, barbecue. So uh, let me show you what it does in that regard. I'm gonna give you a little tour of that and encourage you to take a look at Jet, Chat GPT if you want to, to see what it's all about and if it's of interest to you and how you could use it in your life in some way probably unrelated to barbecue. But let's go ahead and take a look. So this is the OpenAI website. That's the company or organization that's behind Chat GPT. This is the homepage. I found this by just going to Google and doing a search on Chat GPT, and there's a link that brought me to this page. And they have some information up here about who they are and about the research they do. Um, but to get started with ChatGPT, you go down to this link that says Try ChatGPT. And you either log in if you have an account or you sign up. Now, I've already signed up, so I'm going to just log in. But just to let you know, the sign up process requires your email address and a, a eight digit password. And then it sends you an email authentication to make sure that your email address is valid. And then it wants your phone number and it sends that to um, your, sends it to you as a text message or sends you a confirmation through a text message to verify that your phone number is correct. So they do want your email address. They want a password. They want um, your phone number to get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and log in. And here's the main screen within ChatGPT. And you see some examples of things it can do. You can type in a phrase. You can, um, it has sort of the capabilities and limitations of things it can do. And I'm not gonna try to explore all these things for you today, but I do want to just do some, some chat with this to see what this tool can tell us about barbecue, for example. So the way you interact with this interface is you go down here to this text box at the bottom of the page, you click into the box, and then you type a phrase or a query or a question. So I'm going to type in this phrase, tell me about American barbecue. And let's see what ChatGPT has to say. You can see that in real time, it's coming up with some text that describes, or it's in response to the question I've asked. I've not told it how much information I want. I haven't told it how many paragraphs I want. This is an actual live response to the question I asked. Tell me about American barbecue. <clears throat> but let's go back to the top here. What does it say about American barbecue? Barbecue, often referred to as BBQ, in quotes, <clears throat> is a style of <clears throat> is a style of cooking that originated in the southern United States and is characterized by slow cooking meat usually beef, pork, or poultry, over low heat for an extended period of time, often with the use of wood smoke for added flavor. This method of cooking is thought to have originated with enslaved Africans in the colonial era who would slow cook meat as a way to make it last longer and tenderize it. 
In America, barbecue has a rich cultural history and is associated with outdoor gatherings and social events such as picnics, family reunions, and political campaigns. Today, barbecue continues to be a staple of Southern cuisine, with different regions of the country having their own unique styles and specialties. Some of the most well-known regional styles of American barbecue include Texas-style barbecue, which is known for its emphasis on beef, particularly brisket, and the use of mesquite wood for smoke, Carolina-style barbecue, which is characterized by its use of vinegar-based sauces and a focus on pork, particularly pulled pork, Kansas City-style barbecue, which is known for its sweet tomato-based sauces and a wide variety of meats, including beef, pork, chicken, and sausage, Memphis-style barbecue, which is famous for its dry rubbed ribs, both wet and dry, and pulled pork shoulder served with a tomato-based sauce. No matter the regional style, American barbecue is beloved for its rich, smoky flavors and is a cherished part of this country's cultural heritage. Now, that's a pretty neat little <laughs> summarization of American barbecue. What do you think about that? I think that's, you know, pretty spot on. Covers a number of different topics. Covers the meats that are used, the origins of it, the fact that it's slow-cooked meat over a long time to make it tender. Talks about the culture of it how barbecue has been utilized throughout history, that it has roots in, of, in Southern cuisine, and summarizes four of the major styles of barbecue. That's pretty neat, I think. Now, you know how they've gleaned this information, I'm sure that they have loaded up their database with lots of sources of information, and they pull from that in various ways to generate this on the fly. But that's pretty cool for that to work like that in real time. Now, let's... Try another query, okay? Let's go down here and type another phrase. Let's say, um, let's say, um, um, let's say African American influences on barbecue. African-American influence on barbecue is significant and deeply rooted in the history and culture of the southern United States. Barbecue as a cooking method is believed to have originated with enslaved Africans who were brought to the Americas during the colonial era. These enslaved people would slow cook meat, often pork, over low heat as a way to make it last longer and tenderize it. Now you see there's some phraseology there that's very similar to the other block that we just saw, right, for the previous question. So I'm seeing some overlap in the information it's pulling. This method of cooking became known as barbecue and it evolved into a staple of Southern cuisine and a way to bring people together for social gatherings and events. Again, some overlap here. African Americans have continued to play a major role in the development and evolution of barbecue in the United States, particularly in the South. Some repetition here about the South again. We have, they have opened and run many of the most famous and beloved barbecue restaurants and their contributions to the cuisine have been recognized and celebrated for their innovation and delicious flavors. Some of the most well-known African-American pitmasters and barbecue restaurateurs include Ed Mitchell, Leo Pitmaster Reed, and Joe Duncan. So that's interesting. This actually pulled some names uh, of African-American pitmasters that are well-known. African-American barbecue has also been influenced by a variety of other cultural and culinary traditions, including Native Americans, Spanish, and Caribbean. So there are interesting ties in that regard. That's interesting. It pulls that up. The result is a rich and diverse culinary heritage that continues to evolve and be enjoyed by people all over the world. So that's a pretty neat um, summary as well on that subject. Let's try something else. Let's say, um, what is Texas style barbecue? And let's see what kind of response we get to that. Texas style barbecue is a regional style of barbecue that originated in Texas and is known for its emphasis on beef, particularly brisket, and the use of mesquite wood for smoke. This barbecue is characterized by its bold and savory flavors, which are a result of the long, slow cooking process, and the use of mesquite wood, which imparts a distinctive smoky flavor to the meat. So again, there is some repetitive information being pulled that we saw in the very first query that we submitted. In Texas, beef is considered king, and brisket is the star of the show. Texas style brisket is usually rubbed with a blend of spices, including salt, pepper, paprika, and cumin, and slow cooked over low heat, often for several hours until it's tender and juicy. 
The meat is then sliced and served with a simple sauce if desired, allowing the flavor of the smoke and spices to shine through. Other popular meats in Texas-style barbecue include ribs, sausage, and pulled pork, which are also slow-cooked over mesquite wood for added flavor. Sides typically include classic southern dishes like coleslaw, baked beans, and cornbread. Another closing phrase here that's almost in many ways inspired by the previous ones we saw. There seems like there's kind of a formula here for the closing paragraph. Texas-style barbecue has a rich cultural history and is closely tied to the state's cowboy and frontier heritage. That's new information. Often associated with outdoor gatherings and social events, it is a staple of Southern cuisine that is loved by people all over the world. So you begin to see some repetitive stuff here in these responses from ChatGPT. Um, I have to assume that some of this information is being, you know, who knows what the sources are for this? I don't know whether they've gleaned this from websites, from blogs, from actual books. I don't know, but some of it does seem to be, um, I don't know, ideas or things that have been pulled from sources and then were used again and again in the responses that they give or maybe massaged in different ways. Let's try one more thing here. Let's say um, um, how to make barbecued brisket. Here's a simple recipe for making barbecue brisket. Well, let's see if this is right on or not. And is this just stolen from someone's website? I don't know. Ingredients, one whole brisket, 10 to 12 pounds. That's a good size for the Smoky Mountain cooker. Two tablespoons coarse salt, two tablespoons black pepper, two tablespoons paprika, one tablespoon garlic powder, one tablespoon onion powder, one tablespoon cumin. So that's, you know, kind of a basic Texas rub. One half cup of your favorite barbecue sauce, optional, mesquite or oak wood for smoking. I thought it was interesting they mentioned so much about mesquite in the previous section. They didn't really acknowledge other woods, so I'm glad to see they do here. <clears throat> Instructions, trim the brisket, remove any excess fat from the brisket, leaving a fat layer of one quarter inch thick. That's pretty good advice. Keep the meat moist during cooking. Make the rub in a small bowl, mix together the salt, pepper, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, cumin. Rub the mixture evenly over the entire brisket, making sure to cover all surfaces. Set up the smoker by filling the smoker with mesquite or oak wood and light it according to the manufacturer's instructions. Set the temperature to 225. That's a good temperature, low temperature, 225. I would do 275 these days. Um, filling the smoker with mesquite or oak wood assumes that this is a stick burner, I guess. Smoke the brisket. Place the brisket in the smoker, fat side up. That's a good recommendation in a stick burner. In the smoking on cooker, I usually do it fast side down since the heat source is coming from below. Let it smoke for six to eight hours or until the internal temperature reaches 165. Maintain the temperature of the smoker at 225. Add what is needed to keep the smoke going. Now we're going to do the Texas crutch or the butcher paper. It knows that step. Wrap the brisket. Once the brisket reaches 165, wrap it tightly in aluminum foil and return to the smoker. So they're doing the crotch they're not doing the the butcher paper let it continue to smoke for another four to six hours or until the internal temperature reaches 205 so they got that temperature pretty much right on the nose rest the brisket once it hits 205 remove it from the smoker let it rest for at least 30 minutes until it's cooled slightly you could use a much longer rest in a cooler of course slice and serve slice the brisket against the grain serve with your favorite barbecue sauce if desired this recipe is a great starting point for making barbecue brisket. You can adjust the seasonings and cooking time to suit your personal taste. The most important thing is to be patient and allow the brisket to smoke low and slow for the best flavor and texture. Well, that's interesting. Now, I noticed there's a button here called Regenerate Response. Let's see if that does anything different. So some preamble. And we have... we have a slightly different recipe. Well, a, a different recipe here. We've got now oregano, we've got cayenne, we've got apple juice and beef broth and dark brown sugar. We're allowing the brisket to come to room temperature for an hour. So they're pulling from some other sources of information here, some, somebody else's recipe and technique to generate this response. They make the rub, they wrap, they rub it all over the brisket. They light the coals they on a on a gas so this is for a gas grill now we're off of wood smoke and we're into gas grills now two zone fire this is confusing now because it says set up the grill light the coals or 
oh, excuse me, light the coals or heat up a gas grill. So we're now, in, we're acknowledging this could be live fire with a gas grill or it could be charcoal fire with a charcoal grill. Two zone cooking area, cook the brisket in a foil pan with apple juice and beef broth in the pan. So that's a very different approach than the previous one. And one that I, I wouldn't put an uncooked brisket with juices in a pan like that, but apparently somebody does. Baste the brisket every hour with the pan juices. Wrap it. Once it re reaches the desired temperature, we don't specify what that temperature is in this one. Return to the indirect side of the grill. Continue for two hours. They don't tell us what a internal temperature should be. Allow it to rest 30 minutes. And then some closing comments. So this second response to me is much weaker than the first one. The first one was a really basic, uh, you know, Texas style brisket that was, um, we go back to it here, salt, pepper, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, some cumin with mesquite. And, and maybe this is clued in on the fact that my previous question was about Texas style barbecue. So perhaps that's why I responded this way. Seemed to give us a pretty straightforward and right on approach. The second one that gave us when I asked it to regenerate seemed uh, quite different, not really Texas specific, which I didn't say I wanted that, but um, it's a recipe that I don't really, I don't find that interesting and I'm not that happy with that response. But as you can see, it's interesting to see how it generates these responses to your queries and it, um, you can regenerate them as well to see other approaches that it wants to recommend. So now what, if any, impact does this have on your day-to-day -day barbecuing? Probably none, right? I mean, this is just an interesting technology that I thought would be fun to share with you, to show you what it can do, and to see what it has to say about barbecue, which I was kind of interested to see what that's all about. If you're interested in playing with ChatGPT, just go to your Google browser and search for ChatGPT, and you'll find the link to it. Sign up for an account, and you can have fun playing with this technology too. I hope you enjoyed seeing this video. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you very much for your support. I really do appreciate it. If you would take a moment to like this video, I if you got this far, please, please like it. And uh, if you would subscribe to my videos, it helps other people find them. Google recommends videos more that people have for channels that they've subscribed to. So thank you in advance for doing that. I really appreciate it. And until next time, happy barbecuing. Don't do it on your computer. Do it in the backyard in real life. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>